Okay, I'm doing this. The topic of all topics. Prettiest cars ever made. But let's have some ground rules to make it more interesting. Modern cars only, or the whole list will be cars from the 60s. And let's stick to one car per category, or it'll all just be grand tours. Cool? Cool. Anyways, guys, I'm stuck. And in this episode, a dancing girl, a scooting dog, and in no particular order, the seven most beautiful modern cars from different segments. And remember, that's just like my opinion, man. Grand Tourer. Let's get this out of the way. Grand Tours are gorgeous, and I'm sure you have one of your favorites. But for me, I have to give it to... <clears throat> Maserati. Bravo. <laughs> what they created back in 2007 is, to my eyes, the most beautiful modern car ever made. It wasn't the best to drive or the best to buy, but the design alone kept it relevant and on sale for 13 long years. That's older than most Fortnite players. But you wouldn't be able to tell because it hasn't aged one bit. Look at it. It is unmistakably a man's car through and through, but with a dose of those feminine details that make it look so seductive. Those hips, those eyes, those lips, those curves. Mm. It is long, low, wide, perfectly proportioned, and just the right amount of sexy. Elegantly sexy, not vulgar. Think Cindy Crawford, not Cindy Sparks. And you know what? If this channel ever takes off, you can bet your every dollar that I'll be buying one. But if you want to help me out, there's a link to my GoFundMe page in the description. Oh yeah, it's real. SUV. You know how when designers show the drawings of cars, they look like all imposing, aggressive, and sleek, but then you see the production model and it's nothing like it? So what gives? Well, it's all about ratios and proportions. The bigger the wheels, the smaller the cabin, the better it looks. Trouble is, the oversized wheels aren't very comfortable, and you still have to fit grown-ass people inside that cabin. That's where the Range Rover Velar comes in. SUVs are long past any off-roading expectations, so why bother with the aggro look? Instead, let the occupants sit a lot lower so the roof line can be lowered too, and put gigantic 22-inch wheels that cut deeper into the body. Yeah, it's still an SUV, so there's enough soft tire to go around. Also, take a look at those lights, front and rear. They've been squished as much as possible, then pulled way around the edges. Add to them those posh bronze elements, the strong horizontal lines, and it's clear what they were aiming for. All those stretch lines make it longer, wider, and optically even lower. Form over function? Honestly, in this case, I wouldn't even mind. Minivan. It happens. You get a kid. You get another one. Maybe even a third one. And it breaks you. Screw what I want. Kids are the only thing that matters. That's praiseworthy, but why do all of these kid-friendly cars have to kill your last will to live as well? Look at this Dodge Crapa van. No wonder people are buying SUVs. If only we had the Renault Grand Scenic in the USA a three-row minivan that makes you actually want to get up in the morning. Look at that roof line. Look at those wheels. Those are 20-inch, by the way, and come as standard. The front looks like it came off a sports car and not some commercial vehicle. It even has a fake splitter. But the best view has to be the side. This pinch in the middle is pure genius. Without it, the sides of the car would be too tall, and then you'd have to raise the roof as well, and then you don't have that remarkable sleek silhouette. By the way, did you notice the yacht spoiler in the back? Yep, this minivan is beau to full. So much so that pulling out too late isn't the end of the world anymore. Hybrid. Seriously now, why don't more cars look like this? Forget about the future we were promised. Cadillac has already done it, and it's more or less a conventional production car. Sure, it is based on the Chevy Volt, which is a hybrid, but the layout is as classic as it can be. Four seats and a four banger at the front, and yet there's nothing classic about the way it looks the forward-leaning cabin, a stubby nose, and a flat rear glass. That's how you draw a mid-engine Lambo, not a two-door Volt. Personally, I think ELR is one of the best-looking objects ever created by humans. Looking at each line, the way it's laid down to create such beautiful shapes, and how they connect them into one cohesive whole, it's just brilliant. I could spend hours just marveling at it. But my favorite thing about the ELR is that despite being all prismatic, Lambo, and look-alike, it's not overdone. Instead, it's elegant, like a precious gemstone. And when you consider how few of these were sold, it really is like a beautiful rare diamond. Sedan. Classic three-box, four-door sedans have been around for decades, and people are getting kind of bored with them. 
that's why we now have the so-called four-door coupes. A bit more sleek, a bit more interesting. Impressive, different, uh, looks very sleek. It's a nice car. Except they are all flawed. All but one car, the BMW 6 Series Grand Coupe. Unlike most cars in the category, BMW didn't start with a regular sedan chassis and then curve the roof down to make it more coupe-ish. That would be stupid. The rear headroom gets limited, so the roof must be extended for the back, giving it a bit of an awkward hunch. That just messes up proportions. Bavarians avoided this pitfall by starting with a coupe and then just extending the wheelbase to accommodate two more people. This may be more expensive, but the characteristic features of the sexy Sixer were kept intact. It still has a long hood, the roof slopes down, the C-pillar is thin, and there's even enough of a trunk left, which importantly is rising up. That very little detail is significant. It gives this Beamer a charging stance, like a 100-meter sprinter ready to pounce. Not like a Mercedes CLS, which looks like a dog dragging its itching ass over the carpet. Hatchback. The Pigeon 206 is the oldest car on this list, which just goes to show that real beauty lasts forever. Sure, it doesn't stand out next to today's city cars since the whole category is turned into an overly stylized fashion accessory, but look past the excessive use of chrome and you'll see that few of them can hold a candle to the old 206. That old Frenchie is nicely proportioned with well incorporated bumpers and details, but let's not beat around the bush. Front end is what really steals the show. That smile, that damn smile. The cat eyes, the bottom end with a strong jaw, it really is pretty, especially when you see its rivals. Back in 1998, small city cars were budget cars, which meant you weren't getting much bang for your buck. Forget about optional extras, it doesn't even pay for a car designer to draw the damn thing. Boring, boring, boring. Now compare them to the 206, a budget car that comes with the design included in the price. No wonder it's the best selling pigeon ever, which by the way, is still being produced in some parts of the world. Also, the best car ad ever. Number one. Many of you will probably say that the Audi RS6 is the best looking estate car out there. And for once, I will not object. RS6 looks amazingly brutal with its wide body kit and gigantic wheels. But that's a cheap trick. Every car looks brutal after such treatment. Strip down all the sporty makeup and the most beautiful estate is the Volvo V60, especially the extra rugged cross country edition. After two decades of dangling around with curvy lines, Volvo is back to drawing what they draw best. Bricks. Blunt, simple, and masculine. Adding the rugged cross-country kit just accentuates these attributes even more. Plus, the dark wheel arches and bottom skirts makes this tall riding wagon look even taller and more capable than most SUVs these days. But it's not bulky. It is elegant and slim. Tight, even. But most of all, it is perfect. Strong words, I know, but allow me to explain. Volvo's design team has a new and refreshing take on car design, trying to use as few lines as possible. That works because true perfection is not achieved when there's nothing left to add, but when there's nothing left to take away. Anyway, that's my list, but if I were to add three more, it would be these. Can you recognize them? Agree with the list? What beautiful cars would make up your list? Comment below, hit like, hit dislike, subscribe if you're awesome, and we'll see you in the next one. Cut! And you know what? In this... Ah, ah. Man, I haven't even been drinking it. Some of the words just flip-flopping around in my mouth.